Name some things that you would inspire single women to do in this season. As a single woman, when I was single, I traveled. Even though we do it with my husband, but travel, saw things that I've never seen before, experienced different types of food, different types of music, different types of cultures, build business. You know, got my credit together yes. so that whenever my husband was coming, I would not be a liability to him. There it I is. am bringing something to the table. Mm -hmm. So let's get these bills paid off. Let's get some money saved up. Because, again, I never know when, because my husband is coming. I'm called to be a wife. There may be a time where he gets down. Mm -hmm. And I should be able to say, because I'm the help. Yes. Baby, let me help you financially. There it is. So save money. Um, launch things that I knew I could do without having to divide my attentions. Because once I'm married, my focus is my husband, my children. Yeah. We put porn to shame. <laughs> the womb isn't just about where I give Talk birth to about babies. It. Talk. The womb is about where we give birth to perfect. Talk. I was basically all of her nevers. I never imagined my journey would inspire people all over the world. You have set a standard in love. I was dating a young lady who helped me heal. Wow, yeah. this woman is a ride or die. The conversations have really helped me to change my perspective on relationships. I had 19 attorneys at one time that were speaking into my ear. 19, 19 attorneys. Attorney. My, my, my last relationship. You know, it did a number on me. What you did not know is I had a whole little situation lined up that evening. Your transparency is literally setting people free. And you're unique. You ain't like nobody else. I, I noticed that right away. You can make me cry. <laughs> um, thank you. I received that. Let one of them Barbie doll bodies walk over here. You gonna say, dear future wifey. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They're gonna go right in that box. <laughs> I'm Lateris R. Whitfield, and welcome to the Dear Future Wifey Podcast. Welcome to the Dear Future Wifey Podcast. I'm your host, Lateris R. Whitfield. Man, season five has been nothing short of amazing. God, I just thank you for that. But if you are still shacking up with us, come on, hit that subscription button and subscribe. Come on, let's make a commitment. Um, Gosh, I've been watching the subscriptions just rise and rise and rise. And let me not neglect those that are listening to us on audio platforms. Uh, make sure that you subscribe if you're listening to us on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Uh, leave a comment, leave a review that helps us to trend uh, on those platforms as well. Uh, thank y'all for making the Dear Future Wifey podcast top 10 on Apple Podcasts in relationships. That's such an honor. In the United States, we're number one in uh, Uganda, uh, countries I've never even stepped foot in. And God promised that he'll make our names great in places that our feet haven't even stepped in. So uh, that, that touches me a lot. Um, as you know, we're going to be launching the Lit Society. Uh, re uh, registration has already started. We launch it on October the 1st. It's going to be an amazing time. Make sure you get in before the cutoff date. Uh, yeah, lives are going to be changed and transformed. How can you evolve to the state of mind you openly confess your faults? Healing. Imagine a life where you are unapologetically you. Freedom. What could you accomplish fully showing up in every area of your life? Anything. Your new life of endless possibilities awaits. Become an exclusive member of the Lit Society. We are all flawed humans. The difference between the Lit Society and others is we admit it and then do something about it to impact the world. We keep it lit. Live intentionally and transparently. This isn't just another program. It's reprogramming destructive mindsets to live intentionally and transparently. Become lit. Join the elite and become a member of the Lit Society today. Today's episode is going to be amazing. Y'all been asking me to do the, the female version of what we did with David Burris, which is defining a husband. So today I had to find the best person applicable <laughs> for such a cause as this. Uh, 
So without further ado, welcome to the Dear Future Wifey podcast, Cheyenne and Siobhan Smith. We are honored to be here. Thank you so much. Listen, Siobhan, <clears throat> Siobhan, I saw a video the other day and it was this, it was this white man. And well, give me context. Where was this at? Because you began to see we, we well, I'm going to go back. Where were y'all at? Cause I get excited when I see moments like that. Where were y'all at? Which video with me? The praying? video with you praying over the white guy and the we guy were... got slain in the spirit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we were in Tulsa, Oklahoma, um, at a church called Ignite, and it was a woman's conference, and Latarius, powerful. So what was he doing at the women's conference? He serves there in the ministry. So even though there were women there. The men were there serving, praise and worship, you know, security, I'm bear, and he was just one in the, you know. And what happened? How, how did that moment happen? The, the father just shined a light on him, and um, he said he needs to be ministered to. Um, there was so much that I saw for his life, um, <clears throat> and just saw the, the chains of bondage trying to keep him from moving forward. And um, I just said, you know what? He's going to be used for God in a major way, but breakthrough has to happen. And God, God, freedom. Man, when I say I miss those moments like that in the church, we get so busy and we're so caught up on the timetable mm -hmm. of service that we don't allow the, the Holy Spirit to just take control. Yeah. We were there from 12 o'clock. We didn't get back to the hotel until 930 because of that. The presence of God was so undeniable that no one even looked at the time. You said from 12 o'clock what? From 12 noon. To 9 in We the got evening. home at 9. It was so much deliverance. Prophetic utterances was being released. See, healing. That's that old school stuff. Yes. It's that, and you said this took place in Tulsa? Tulsa, Oklahoma, Ignite Church, Apostle Katria Bell. And this is what God is doing in this hour. He's pouring out his spirit. He is pouring out his spirit in, in, in undeniable ways so that even those who don't believe can say, you know what? God is real. I'm trying to remember, where, what city did Azusa take place? Tulsa, Oklahoma. Yep. And God is restoring Tulsa, Oklahoma, and revival is getting ready to hit. See, I know I'm I'm I'm, I'm old school church. Yes, huh? You know yes, about sir. Azusa, boy. Yes, sir. When I tell you, man, it's it's God is God's about to release some stuff, he or is, is releasing He's some stuff it. in the atmosphere that's going to upset the world. Yes, sir. oh, it's going to upset the world. It. So, um, today's episode is affectionately titled "Defining a Wife." Okay. Why do you think I have you to come on and talk about this? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why. I don't know why you had me out here. You're Maybe. very, you're very um, particular, and um, you have a whole ministry that's built around what? Around wives and teaching women how to be effective in that which I believe is a calling from the Lord. Everybody is not called to be a wife, right. and I, I don't hear that. All right, you everybody is not. Hold on, hold on. You done made some people mad right uh -oh. there. You just said that everybody's not called to be a wife. Everybody's not called to be a wife, and it's okay. There are some people that have been called to be single, and they are happy in their singlehood. They are fulfilling the purposes of God. They don't feel like, oh, I don't have a spouse. They're good. And the Bible says that when you're single, you live your life to do what? To bring God glory. There it is. So you're fulfilled in walking in purpose. And then there are others who have been called to be wives called to help a man fulfill purpose because that's what a wife is she's just been called to be the help to push man into what he's been called to be Shane, yes sir let's unpack this um let's talk about we're gonna we're gonna back up a little bit how did y'all meet well we met through social media Really? Yes. Who slid and who DM? <laughs> that's, a, that's always the first question. Uh -huh. Who slid into whose DMs? Get in the so, mic. Say it loud. Yeah. He said, say it loud so, and proud. So, yes, I did uh, DM her. Uh huh. Um, I always knew of her um, through church. We was in the same organization, uh, Church of God in Christ, um, but never crossed paths um, the entire time that we both was in um, in ministry there. Um, at that time, she was married, and I was married. So um, we say that time. How long ago was this? So, Ooh. man, almost ten years ago. Ten years ago, almost. So mm -hmm. I've been in it all my life. Um, um, but she actually left in two thousand 
15. 15. Mm-hmm. Um, which then I was still around then. So, are you talking about you're talking about the faith of Kojic? I was yes. talking about um, what the denomination when you I'm talking about when y'all were married. So, you were married when was so I was married for 20 years previously. And she was, and married. I was married 17 years, 17 years, almost and went 22. through a divorce in 2015. You got divorced in 2015, uh-huh. and you lost your wife, right? And I lost my wife in 2019. Uh, unexpected at 40 years old, wasn't sick, just unexpected loss, which uh, many uh, that could imagine turned my life upside down. Yeah, I'm sorry to hear that, King. But um, through that, uh, of course, it, it caused me uh, major pain, my children, even physically on my body, uh, it took me through a major, uh, major loss. Um, so when but, you say physically, what did that do? Because I have this, I have my ideology around that. Uh, you experienced a loss, and what did that do to you physically? Physically, well, one first mentally, the trauma of it, the trauma of it, um, just took my mental brain of just couldn't the concept of just her passing like that. Yeah, uh, all of a sudden not being sick, nothing being wrong, just the concept of that just. I couldn't get that through my head. Like, how could this happen? Um, but then from the mental, it then took a toll on me physically where the trauma part made me think I w- the same thing was going to happen to me. Mm. It was a heart condition that she had that we did not know about. And because it happened to her passing in her sleep, then mentally I'm thinking it's going to happen to me. Yeah. So now I can't sleep in the middle of the night mm. because it happened at the middle of the night. Yeah. And I'm staying up till a glimpse of light come out, and then I feel safe. Ooh. Because trauma, you know, the, the the Bible says that at first what you believe in your mind then sets in your heart. Yes. And then it becomes action that you walk out. So now I'm walking in fear, thinking I'm going to die, literally. So pains would come to me, and I feel like I'm going to have a heart attack. Yeah. I'm jumping to go to the hospital. She could tell you when we first met, I was going to the hospital every other day. Are you serious? Yes. Every other day. Every other day. Out the blue. Oh, my God. Uh, we got to go. Take me to the emergency room. I feel like I'm going to have a heart attack. And I would put my hand on his chest. Yes. And Lateris, you would think his chest was getting ready. His heart. It was, was getting b- pounding that hard. Yes. He was, he's sweating. And at one time, you know, because... As soon as he'll tell me, okay, we have to go to emergency. I'm like, no, we're going to be okay. Let's calm down. Yeah. We're going to pray. But one particular time, I put my hand on his chest, and it scared me. It was pounding that hard. I you said, could feel it just oh, thumping your hand. We to go to the emergency room. Yeah. So what was the doctors telling you? What, what so when I would go, we get to the hospital. They do EKG. They do ultrasound. They say, hey, you're you fine. I, was going, I went to the heart doctor. I went and got the stress test. They put me through the CAT scan. Then I'm thinking something, all right, something going on in my head. Mm. I'm going back. They, they are seeing the neurologist. I, I went and they um, put the little things in me to make sure um, my nerves was good. Because I'm thinking, oh, my, my, I feel a little pain. My nerves, something going on. Making sure I ain't have no blood clots. I've seen every do- doctor that you could think about. And he's never had health problems. Never had health problems. But again, it goes back to the that trauma. trauma. What's in you? That is so biblical. Boy, that's so biblical. That is so biblical. And so um, you lost your wife. You're going through this uh, mental and emotional and physical. It's taking a, a toll on you physically, and me- mentally, and emotionally. Um, and then I'm going to jump to her story. What was going on with you during that same time span before y'all ever connected with each other so i'm in probably my sixth seventh year of divorce um i was pastoring a church in virginia and um you know raising the kids and just believing god that one day i'll be married again because i knew i was called to be a wife called to be a wife but i did not allow that desire to consume me where i could not fulfill you know what i was called to be sometimes many single women we become so consumed with i want to be married yeah. Him, your husband that we put all of our energies and focus on that and that prohibits us from doing what we've been called to do as a single woman first so god you know my desire i want to be a wife this single life out here is not for me I oh, let's, stop. let's stop this what you could be doing as a single woman name some things that you would inspire single women to do in this season as a single woman when i was single i traveled 
even though we do it with my husband, but travel, saw things that I've never seen before, experienced different types of food, different types of music, different types of cultures, build business, you know, got my credit together yes. so that whenever my husband was coming, I would not be a liability to him. There it I is. am bringing something to the table. Mm -hmm. So let's get these bills paid off. Let's get some money saved up. Because again, I never know when, because my husband is coming, I'm called to be a wife. There may be a time where he gets down mm -hmm. and I should be able to say, because I'm the help, yes. baby, let me help you financially. There it is. Mm -hmm. So saved money, um, launched things that I knew I could do without having to divide my attentions. Because once I'm married, my focus is my husband, my children. Yeah. As a single person, I can put as much time. If I want to invest <laughs> hours and hours into my project, I can do it without feeling like I'm neglecting yes. you know, my yes. duties as a wife. So I put my whole self into what the Lord wanted me to do Good. as an individual first. Yes. So that again, when he show up, He's not looking to me, looking at me like I want something from I'm trying to come to be taken care of. Yes. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. You 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 got something going on, but now I come to be an addition and now the two of us together a force to be reckoned with. There it is. There it is. And so you are busy uh, uh, taking care of the things that you have to do. You're in ministry. And then what happened? Seven years in this single uh, oh season. What happened? This this season here. So pastoring the church. I'm in my third year. Finally, the church has taken off in Portsmouth, Virginia, the Life Center. And I am seeing God transform lives in ways that I, I dreamed it. I saw yeah. it, and it's like it's finally happening. And the Lord says to me, your season is up. Uh-oh. And I'm saying, we just get, we're <laughs> we just, just getting, getting started. started. <laughs> we're just getting started. What do you mean? Your season is up here. You will release this ministry. I said, okay, release it like <laughs> I can just do maybe a couple Sundays and just let the other ministers take it over yeah. and keep the name. He said, you will walk away from everything. What do you mean? Why? He said, I'll tell you. I want to see if you will trust me without having all the details. I want to see if you will obey me even when you look stupid. You will walk away from this ministry. You will give it to this particular person. And then I will give you the next steps. And I got up at the church. I remember July 2019. And I shared with them, I taught on Abraham, how the Lord told him to leave Kindred, mm. leave what's familiar, and go to a land that I'm going to show you. And as I'm teaching it, I said, and this is what the Father is requiring me to do. I said, and this is not what I want to do. It's what I know I have to do. But God will never have you to walk away from something and not give you more than what you walked away from. Never. And it was, it was so... It was a very, you see, it still brings tears to my eyes. It was yeah. so sad because I love the people that God called yeah. me to pastor. And then they didn't understand. Why are you leaving us? Where are you going? And here I am talking about, I don't know. Mm. So, Pastor, are you losing your mind? How yeah. you, you're walking away and you don't know where you're going? Yeah, that no. Sound crazy. Sound real crazy. Why would God tell you to do that? I don't know. What is it that you're going to, are you going to pass us again? I don't know. I know what God told me to do. Walked away from the ministry. Then he said, Get boxes. Now you're going to start packing your house. I said, now wait. You want me to leave my church and you're telling me that I'm going to leave where I live? Okay, God, am I moving to another house? He said, no, you're leaving the state where I've been all my life. You are going to. So you grew up there? I am from Virginia. <laughs> all my life. Said, Everything that's comfortable is in Virginia. My mom, my sister, everything. Pack, get a box. Start telling your kids, y'all are in transition. Tell your kids that you don't know where we're going, but God is taking us somewhere. Mm -hmm. Got boxes, started packing. <laughs> and in the midst of, of, you know, doing this, I'm visiting a church just so I can still get word. And I'm sitting in the back of the church, you know, in my area, people knew who I was. So when I would come in, this particular pastor, he he knew the season I was in. Because, you know, everybody yeah. knew the story. The, no, the, the noise was spread. She has walked away from her church. What's wrong with her? She's crazy. Siobhan has lost her mind. Yeah. Got to be a scandal. Yeah. Maybe she owed money. Maybe she's sick. I, I, I mean, the things that I heard, and I could never say anything other than yeah. I'm obeying God. And that it's going to all make sense in a few days. 
and um, packed up the house. And I went to Michigan. I was still traveling and ministering. I went to Michigan. And after ministry, my girlfriend took me to a massage parlor. So we walk into the massage parlor and she says to me, I've been waiting for you. Everything that you've done to obey God, God is going to honor you. She said, I want to confirm that you are right where you're supposed to be. You're going to relocate. And where you're going to move to is about six hours away from where you live. She said, but the reason why you're going to move is because God is going to send you a husband. She said, but the thing about this husband is he's a young widow. Oh, my goodness. She says he lost his wife unexpectedly. She said, and he's not doing well. And God is going to send you into this man's life to bring him restoration and to bring his family restoration. She said, he has a very funny name. She said, it's like the name is pronounced different from how it's spelled. She said, but you will know it's him when he shows up. She said, crazy thing is, y'all have been in each other's presence, but y'all have never met. She said, but you will move and you will call me and tell me when you meet him. I never received the massage of Terrence because she messed me up that day. That was in the same month. That was July. March, I get the inbox from him on social media. I get the inbox from him and I'm like, who is this? You know, and I'm just like, hey, thanks for reaching out. And I saw, I went to his page just to see who is this reaching out? And I saw that he did custom clothes. And I said, do you make prom suits? My son is getting ready to graduate. Do you do prom suits for people out of town? He said, I have clients all across the country. He said, I'll send you the measurement sheet and we'll get your son together. I said, okay. And from that conversation about the prom suits, we exchanged phone numbers. We talked on the phone for eight hours. When we were talking, by the end of the conversation, he says, yeah, um, my wife passed away and I'm raising my kids. I said, what did you say? He said, my wife passed away unexpectedly. He said, and it's been a very hard season, but I know I got to keep going for my children. I said, where do you live? Because at this point, I'm on the phone with my husband. Where do you live? He said, well, I live in a place called Sicklerville, New Jersey. I said, Siobhan, that's where you're getting ready to go. You're going to move to Sicklerville, New Jersey. I said, where is that? He told me it's right in the middle of Philadelphia and um, New York. Like you're right. I'm right there by Delaware and all. I said, Sicklerville. And that was March and Lateris. We got married five months later. And our families just merged together so, so smooth. We have eight children. Our children are best friends. They travel the world together. They're all the same ages. They, 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 they talk to each other more than we, than we talk to them. And if I could just interject, when, she, when the lady prophesied to her, July 2019, my wife was still living. She did not pass until September of 2019. So she was giving her a preview of what was coming. Not knowing that I wasn't even a widow yet. <sighs> People may be watching this and saying, that's the stuff you see in movies. That cannot be. That just Their brain can't even fathom what y'all are saying right now. And I'm in tears because I've always existed in this space. I've always, I've, I was raised in this space. I've watched the miracle hand of God do some things that people would be like, that's, that couldn't, that cannot be true. It just, I, yeah, that's, maybe you thought that. Maybe y'all missing up, mixing, like missing up, mixing up stuff that people said in one moment and you connected mm -hmm. here. Maybe both of y'all crazy. Because there ain't no way and God right. done told somebody that and then this happens. And Latera, so many people had they, they were just like that this is this is crazy they had to have known each other yeah they oh they was messing each around other. each other while oh, they were still married. he was cheating on his wife they could not understand that god can do something like that until you see it now and it's like we've had so many folks to call us and say we are so sorry yeah really I had, I had so many people that when um first found out that i was dating 
Fifty said, "I was mad. Let's say, I was mad with you. <laughs> I, I couldn't understand how you. Because now, to back up a little bit, my mother. While I'm going through this transition, this grieving, this trauma, she would ask me every now and then, you think you're gonna get married again? Now my mind is far from me. Yeah, you know, I ain't thinking about no. And I, I, I would say, mom, if if I did." It's going to at least be five, ten years from now. So yeah. I was married for 20 years, with her for 22 years. You know, I'm just going to focus on. At that time, I was pastoring too, went going into my fourth year. Um, I would have my own business. My, my my kids, one was in college, one was getting ready to graduate high school, my younger, younger son, and one still in high school. And I said, I'm going to focus on my kids. And she keep asking me about marriage. And and I'm still I'm I'm He's grieving aching. I mean I would sleep with one of my former wives' uh, dresses just to keep the smell, so I could smell her at nighttime every mm. night. I would cry myself to sleep again because I I was fearful to go to sleep. I would stay up all night long and just reminisce and cry and cry. And why are you asking me about? Am I going to get married again? So now, five, ten years from now, I'm telling everybody that, not knowing that God has something totally different waiting for me. And I would say, you know, if I did get married, you know, again, to bring back to my wife's point about a, a woman preparing herself for a wife while she's single, you know, now I thank God I was able to take care of my former wife as I did, you know, but I said this time she got to come to the table with something. She, it got to be much more than what I was in before, and um, that's what God God did this time. He but what did, do you mean by that? When you say come to the table with what? Meaning, um, you know, before my former um, previous marriage, I was the one who took care of everything. I did everything. I mean, from mortgage all the way down to dressing her to taking care of the kids, and I was grateful. I was able to do that. You know, she didn't have to work if she didn't want to work. You know, why you say taking care of the kids? Meaning taking care of the kids when it came to buying them stuff. Are you talking about the, from sure a financial stuff, standpoint? Yeah, financial standpoint, yeah. Um, but also, you know, making sure I was there with them. You know, doctor appointments. I'm there. You know, dentist appointments. You know, all that. But this time, I said she, she had to come to the table to, as she said, to not saying she wasn't a help, but it had to be a different type of help. Yeah, time. yeah. And um, that's what, you know, God blessed me with, you know, this time I tell people all the time that this was my gift. Yeah. And, and, and restoration. I mean, she really came and revived our family when he sent her. So when you reached out to her, um, what month was that you said it was in? So um, here's the crazy thing. Before my previous wife passed away, uh, my wife had a prayer that she used to do on Facebook. And me and my previous wife used to watch it. <laughs> and what was that prayer about? I used to do a, a noonday prayer call every Tuesday at noon. Started in 2012. Mm -hmm. And we used to watch it. Be on. And I would just pray. Pray for the people and pray as the Lord gives me his burden. And him and his wife would tune in on the prayer, he said. Mm -hmm. Look at your eyes water. It's going to make me Because what, what, what it is, I'm, I'm trying, it's something. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot that I see in this moment. It's, a, it's, it's just a lot. Like, um, it's just my heart's desire. Yes. It's like, I will not compromise mm -mm. on getting a woman of God. You don't have to. Oh, she's going to start being prophetic. Here she go. You don't she's have gonna go to. There. God, if he got to bring them from Antarctica, if he got to get them from Africa, he will, in his time, he brings it together. I did not know this man. Mm -hmm. Never. But from the first conversation, I said, this is it. And I've been praying and saying, God, you have to send me a husband. It wouldn't be my prayer all the time. I just said, God, I don't want to do this by myself. I, I didn't try the dating thing. I ain't cut out for it. You know, I I I don't want to do the let's just go out and have a good time. I, I I I love being a wife. I love serving a man. I love being a help. I love catering to my husband. That's what I love to do. Yeah, you can tell. Like you can tell. Oh. Um. And I want to tell you this. Oh Lord. 
when we were dating, mm. he was still grieving. Mm-hmm. When I would come to the house, her pictures and stuff is everywhere. Didn't bother me none. Why not? Because I understood, Siobhan, though this is your husband, he still got to go through his process. And how do I look saying, all right, let's put, all, put away her memory. I'm here now. That would be so silly. Mm-hmm. 20 years with this woman, that's not going to just leave you. Yeah. So and, I honored and, her too. And if he could discard her that quickly, yeah. it's setting the precedence of how quickly you he'll be able me. to discard you. Yeah. Oh no, we're going to honor her. We're going to go to the cemetery. Let's get yes. flowers. I'm going with y'all. Yes. And that's exactly what she did Every, from the beginning. Um, this is one, I guess you can call it a test too. Um, when we was dating. First thing I said, I said, well, you know, I've never been into tattoos or anything, but I wanted to honor my former wife. So I said, I'm going to get a tattoo. I'm a former wife here with a crown and say my queen. Her name was Ebony and her name. I said, how would you feel about that? Because you would have to wake up to that every day seeing it. And psychologically, for a woman, yeah. that's yeah. many not going to do that. Nuh-uh. I don't care how you've been. How I don't care how been anointed, say whatever you want. you be like, hold on now. That's just but too much. She said, no, you've been with your wife for 22 years. She's like, of course you know, you honor her. And I said, wow. You know, because I didn't expect that response, really. You know, but it was like a test, like, okay, all right, I can move forward with this. Did you get a tattoo? Yeah, I got it. Yeah. And I, and I watched him get yeah, it. She, she, we was on FaceTime when I was getting it. <laughs> she was right on FaceTime. At, she, she was coming from preaching at the airport, so in between her layoff. Lay- she lay it over. She was watching. What you think in that moment, Siobhan? I said, I love how he honored her. He was good to his wife. He's going to be good to me. Mm. And he was not ashamed or trying to downplay, I'm going to honor her. That, that made me look at him in a, in a whole nother way. Said, this man is integral. Mm. He's integral. And he didn't take pictures down the church. I will be coming into it because remember him and his wife, they pastored. Pictures are down. He didn't take the things down. I didn't force him to do it until he was ready. How did you know you was ready to take it down? Well, one, um, I understand uh, feelings. So although I was going through my grieving process, once we um, got married and she moved to New Jersey and moved into the house, uh, we relaunched the ministry with us. Yeah. You know, I wouldn't want her to still keep coming in and seeing that, although she's okay with it. Yeah. You know, I understand that, nah, it's time to take that yeah. down. I'm still going through my grieving process, which she understood, but I'm not going to keep it there for yeah. to remind you. Yeah. Because the guy has now given me something new. There it is. How can I move to the new if I'm keep trying to hold on to the old? You better talk about it, King. So, um, at that time, it it was like, all right, let's start removing. And, and we, we talked with our kids, you know, together and said, hey, this is what, we're about to do and one was like well why why would you take that down and even one of her her children said well no mom he he can keep it up a little and i said nah the same way i honored her i'm gonna honor you better talk about it king so i understand that she's strong and she understands but at the same time any woman yeah i feel a little slighted yeah so i understood that no god sent me a gift i'm gonna honor this gift as well and and the thing that that touched me the most, he was willing to tell that to his children. Yes, this is y'all's mother. Yes, but we're gonna all honor your stepmother. They call me Madre. Yeah. We gonna honor Madre, and it's not erasing the memory of your mom. Mm-hmm. We gonna keep the pictures up in y'all's room, mm-hmm. but here at the church, we're gonna put me and Madre up, and y'all are gonna honor that. And they did. Yeah. Man, when I tell you that, it's absolutely beautiful. It's a beautiful doing, it's it's the epitome of doing things decency and in mm. order. Yes, you know, it's like, it's it's just beautiful because you never even hear, I've never even had a conversation with somebody like that. And it's, it's that's why I know y'all are perfect for each other because I'm a very understanding person. But I don't think I'm going to sit there and let my woman get a tattoo of her ex, uh, her deceased husband on her arm, mm-hmm. on her back, on the, on the lower part of her back. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, 
I don't think I want to see that. Every so, night I got to look at it. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's like, but y'all are perfect for each other. That's why I say it's it's what other people need in order for their relationship. That's why marriage is so custom made. Yes. That mm-hmm. what works for one couple, you right. can't say it's going to work for yes, another sir. couple. The capacity that you have to love him on that right. level. Right. Another woman doesn't have that level of capacity yeah. because she may have her own insecurities yeah. that, right. that she brings into that relationship. Yeah. And now you push him away from you instead of drawing him closer to you right. because you're insecurity and you don't realize mm-hmm. that the capacity of his love outweighs the capacity of love that you even think you have for Ooh. him but you push him out the way and he like you don't realize if you get if you really were patient with me right. another 30 days you're gonna have all of me everything yeah. everything and i have i'm gonna give I, you i said siobhan give him his time when i tell you latarius i don't want for nothing i tell shy in my two years of marriage, we've only been married two years mm-hmm. he has given me my best years he has given me my best years. And if I was a woman that felt, I, I'm, I don't like how y'all still honor her. And why we all got every birthday, Mother's Day. Why? No, I'm helping y'all celebrate. Yes. I'm going to go to the cemetery with you guys. Yes. This man, I, I, can, I can think it. And it's mine. King, I need men to hear that. She said, I can think it. And it's mine. The capacity that you have on loving this queen to a level of healing. Because as she was healing you, you were healing her. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. God gave him to me to restore me. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. I mean, it's more than what I could even pray for. I would pray and say, God, you know the type of husband I need. You know what it is you've called me to do. I'm not going to compromise my call for the sake of companionship. Mm. So whoever he is, he will understand. I would want him to understand. I would want him to be able to be okay with the strength you've given to me, but yes. even still understand that even though I'm strong in my call, I'm like a little girl naturally. Mm-hmm. And he would have to love both the superwoman and then this little, this little girl that just wants to feel safe. Yeah. I want people to to hang on to that compromising the call for companionship. For companionship. Oh, that sounds like a whole message. That's, that should be your next your next <laughs> message. Compromising the call for companionship, for companionship. because oftentimes we do that. Yes. We do that, and you don't have to be a pastor or a preacher, evangelist, or prophetess or whatever. There's a certain call over your life yes. for whatever that is. It may be to go uh, help in foster care or to help the homeless or to help batter women, and then you meet somebody and you that's forget a, all yeah. That. And they come in your life like, you got to do all that. So why you got to be down there all the time? Why you over them homeless people? They homeless for a reason. Why you over here doing it? Why you out? And you go, well, let me just, because I don't want to lose them in this. So I'm going to go ahead and just compromise the call Mm -hmm. for this companionship. This this man, like you said, the capacity he has, I don't, I don't, I have not met a man like him. I haven't. Like I married the man that was for me. Yep. He tells me, girl, when you your element, that turns me on. Yeah, I'm he, trying to tell you. He loves yeah. to see me going yeah. forward. I love watching her. I tell her every time, whether I'm with her or not, you know, I love just watching. When I'm not with her, I'm definitely watching, you know, wherever she's at. But when I am, she has other armor bearers and those that serve her. But when I'm there, I'm, I'm serving. serving. You better talk about the king. I'm p- putting her stuff on there. I'm giving her work. I'm make sure, you know, she needs tea. I'm going to do it. Yeah. You know, and I I want everybody to see it because yes. there's nothing wrong with the man serving the wife. That's how it should be. Yes. That's the prerequisite. Um, early, uh, when you begin to talk about the loss of your wife, uh, and I said, I have this ideology about, um, the physical ailments that you you took on um and my ideology is like the movie notebook that that oh. when you become one with somebody mm. when they die and yeah. if they die a yeah. part of you yeah. should die yeah. and yeah. you didn't experience oneness if, if that didn't occur and that's you hit it right on the nail um that she it was september 3rd when she went into you know the unconsciousness but september 6th is when she passed away so th- three days and during that last time, um, when they took her to hospice, uh, the lady said, your wife is beginning to transition. 
She said, I've been doing this for a long time. I know when it's, you know, time. And she said, well, I want you to, she got, the hospital was filled. And, you know, we was believing for a miracle over these three days. I mean, we had people <sighs> all across the country was dedicating their Bible studies and their Sunday mornings to praying for the Smiths, praying for the Smiths. And the lady said, I'm getting everybody out the room, clearing them out the room. She said, I want you to get into the bed with her. And she's waiting for you to release her. Yes. I got into that bed. She dimmed the lights down. She said, and just allow her to go. Mm. I mean, I, I boohooed. The whole place probably heard me in there. I boohooed so hard. And I finally said, you know, it's okay. And when I said it's okay, I seen a tear come down her eye. And uh, through the middle of the night, she ended up passing about 530 that morning. And uh, the uh, funeral home people came even to get her, but they gave me time. I was still laying in the bed with her, you know, and he said, take your time. And to your point, when I got up, I felt like half of me died with her. And that was part of the trauma to start happening. That was part of that physical that was starting to happen to me. Because from right there, and it didn't happen all uh, right then. It took two months before I really started to feel it. And that first time it happened, I felt like I was about to have have a heart attack. It's kind of funny. Me and my, my brother was with me. We was in St. Louis at Convocation and riding in the car in the Uber. And I felt like I was getting ready to have a heart attack. I'm in the middle of the highway. I say, stop the car. Stop the car. I got to get out. Call 911 in the middle of the highway. To the Uber driver. To the Uber driver. And they got out, went to the hospital, and, and that's when it started to happen. And over the next couple months, every other day, I'm telling you, literally. Every, every other, other day. day. When she met my son, what did my son say? This is our youngest boy. I said, Daddy not feeling good, y'all. You know, take it easy. He said, oh, he's at the hospital every other day. <laughs> Because that's that's, that's how, how often it often was. It was. Uh, he'd be all right. He's at the hospital every other day. They got used to him going to the emergency room. But it was God, the fear oh, of that trauma. That is crazy. That really had me like, man, I'm going to die. And the whole thing was, I was telling God, like, God, no, you can't take me. I got to. And it was really what pushed me was my children. You know, God, I got to stay here for my children. Because really, I wanted to die, really. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I really wanted to. My biggest fear has been uh, we did an episode about the marriage vows and I had my friend on here, Kimberly Alexander, who lost her husband. He, he played football for the Oakland uh, Raiders or whatnot, but he uh, he died and she watched him, you know, transition in a bedroom or whatever. Uh, and I was like. I mean, it was hard for me to interview her in that process. Uh, and I was just like, oh, this is just so uncomfortable. And she's, you know, it's been years later or whatever, and she was able to talk about it or whatnot, but I'm sitting up there just, just going through. Um, and we had to record that episode twice because I, I just wasn't present mm. in the interview. Uh, just wasn't present. And then um, I started unpacking. I was like, God, why is that so uncomfortable for me to talk about? One of my greatest fears is that. One of my greatest fears is marrying the woman of my dreams yes, and not yeah. knowing the timetable. Mm -hmm. yeah. And and I marry her and we get two years together, five years together. Cause I had a friend who was married. He got married. He's a drummer, dynamic drummer. Uh, and he was married for a good year and a half for two years. And the next thing I was like, Oh, he got, I saw it on, on Facebook and Oh, he got a beautiful woman. She's beautiful. I'm, I'm texting him, man. I'm so proud of you. Then about a year or two later, mm. I couldn't even tell him, I couldn't even say you have my condolences. I couldn't even, I even, I was such a coward to even just say, I'm sorry about mm. your loss because it was just uncomfortable. I was going to have him come on the podcast and talk. And I was like, I just, he ended up texting me one day, hey, you reached out to me, uh, you know, you want me to come on? I was like, oh, I think I left him on radio. I just, I just couldn't even have a conversation mm -hmm. about it. Um, but his name King, uh, King Robertson, dope drummer. And uh, I said, I don't even know how to talk to you about that because that's my greatest fear. Mm -hmm. um, and to be married to somebody and they're just gone. Because I dealt with a loss of my best friend back in 2015, and it was something mm. that happened suddenly. Yeah. 
and it just I was just like what in the world what and that month was the month of December uh December 2015 and I called it the death of December because a lot I just took a lot of losses mm-hmm. my my marriage was uh my divorce was finalized December the 29th. My best friend died December something. I can't remember mm. the date. Um, and and my nephew, who I was mentoring, went to jail um, for aggravated well assault with a deadly weapon. Mm. And I just started mentoring him the month prior. It was just all this stuff that happened. The the, the woman I was dating at the time, I found out a whole bunch of lies that she had mm. told me. It was just it was just it was a lot. So I coined that month the death of December. So when I hear about loss like that, it's just like. I'm like, man, that's that's a lot to bounce back from. Yeah. But don't let it don't let it become your your greatest fear. Right. God knows exactly who can handle certain things. Like I don't think I could handle that, but God could trust Him with that. Yeah, you know, for for us, that's something that God won't allow us to go through. You know, I I waited for this blessing. Now, God, I know you're gonna yeah. honor me and allow me to have some good years with Him. Mm-hmm. This is this is restoration season. Restoration season. And I need season. more than two, three years. <laughs> yes. Yes. Come on, we done cried and, and suffered and yeah. labored and waited for this moment for it to be taken away. Yeah. You know, abruptly. No. Yeah. So he'll give you the desires of your heart. So don't allow that fear to cause you not to step into you know, the season that God wants you to walk in because you're like, I'm gonna love this woman and we're gonna be so happy and then Maybe she'll be taken away. She won't. Yeah. She won't. Man, so let me ask you this. So as you've stepped into this this position of wife, what 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 makes this different from the previous time you were married? Well, I'm a lot older. You know, I my first marriage, I was twenty one years old. Um, I just think it's so hard when you get married young because you're still learning yourself. Um, you're still trying to figure out what you like and dislike. And so the person I was then is not the person I am now. And the things that I desire now, the things that bring me joy now are not the things that brought me joy before. My first marriage, going to church and going to conferences and, you know, just doing that made me happy. This season of my life. Okay. I love church mm-hmm. and I thank God that, you know, we have the opportunity to serve in ministry but what makes me the most happy is spending time with him and learning him and growing with him and traveling with him and laughing with him. Um, also, just being so considerate and mindful of his desires. Again, as a, as a young wife, got pregnant right away, so I became a young wife and a mother Real at the quickly. same time. Yeah. So my attentions were divided, and I probably gave so much more attention to the, the child than I did to my former husband. Right. Um, now I am very intentional about, again, making sure that he has everything that he needs. That's, that's that. Th- this is my first ministry, my husband first, and then the children. Yes. The children don't come before the spouse. Yeah. The husband first, the children are a byproduct of the union. Yes. So I, I just make sure that I cater to him. Like just, just as he does to me, if he thinks it, okay, God, what is he thinking? What's his desire? I want to make sure I can do it for him. Y'all compete on loving each other. We compete. And we kind of do. We yeah. do. Each other outdo each other. Like, yeah. Oh, she did, did this? All right, let me think what I can do. <laughs> I wrote that in one of my letters. I said, dear future wife, I can't wait for us to compete on who can outlove the oh, other. Oh, it's the sweetest. Yeah, it's like that's, that, that's a beautiful thing. So when she, so you slid in your DMs. You slid in her DMs. We're going to go back to how did y'all go from a grieving husband, a divorced <laughs> wife mm-hmm. who used to be a pastor. Yes. Don't know where she's going right now. Mm-hmm. How did y'all transition to this? Well, I think number one was just understanding of both processes. You know, her understanding that, all right, I know this is my husband, but I understand this thing that he's going through. So I got to be understanding of that. But me, at the same time, understanding what she just came out of. She was married just almost just as long as I was. Yeah. And then, you know, being divorced for that time and then being a single woman. So understanding, um, too, that I got to be understanding of her, of things. For one of the first things I told her was, you can trust me. And I'm, I'm talking about just not, you know, trusting me as far as when it comes to. Uh, Other women, women or something. Yeah, fidelity. Just trusting me as a whole. 
that I'm going to make sure that you're okay. And that's, that's what I do. I want to make sure she's okay. Even when it comes down to her feelings, I never want her feelings to be hurt, you know, cause I'm, we won. So when her feelings hurt, your feelings, her feelings hurt. Are hurt. So I want to make sure that she, she's not hurting. That's why I said you understand oneness. Yeah. Like you understand oneness on a deep level. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I honor that. I want to ask you, at what point did you know that this was your wife? Okay, so um, that eight-hour conversation that we had on our first first time we ever talked, we talked for eight hours. She began to tell me about the lady in Saginaw. And when she was telling me the story, she said, as soon as she said about, she said, my husband's going to be a widow. <laughs> It made me sit up. I was in the, I was in the bed, just laying down. It made me sit up, and she said, "Yeah." And she said his name is is not pronounced how you, it's actually spelled. So, growing up, my name is Cheyenne. How you spell it? C H E Y E N N E. So you got to think. P- teachers jack. They tell your name up. up. Yeah. You know, friends jack my name up. So that was the second thing I said. Hold on, and that's what intrigued me. Those two things. And then she went on. She didn't even tell. She said, she had described. She said he has a bald head. Um, he's a city she, she was that specific. Yes, yeah, yeah, she said he's a city guy, but he actually lives like in the country suburb now. So I'm a Philly, Philadelphian, born and raised West Philly, city, but I live suburban in New Jersey now. So I'm like, <laughs> hold on. So I'm listening, you know, and she's not coming out saying. You know, too much like you, my husband. Yeah. So I'm listening to it and doing those eight hours. All right, cool. So the next day, we talked to five o'clock that morning. It because was, hold on, but at that time, you didn't know all this backstory, did you? When you were saying all that about a widow and all that? As soon as he said to me, I'm a widow, and he's telling me about his wife, mm-hmm. then I said, I want to share something with you. With you. <laughs> yeah. So I just gave the little, little things. Mm-hmm. Just put it out there because I know now I'm on the phone with my husband. <laughs> now, I am not going to tell this man. Our first conversation, hey, you my husband, we get married. He's he like, this is like crazy. <laughs> this lady mother. is a psychopath. <laughs> but, but listen, and how quick God works, especially when it's ordained. We talked for those eight hours to 5 a.m. Monday morning. Now, me and my children are going through grief counseling. We was doing that as a family. Then also we did it individually. So I had my grief counseling that morning, 10 a.m. So um, I'm in grief counseling, and my grief counselor says to me, you know, I don't want you to allow anyone to put a timetable on you. She said, because when it's the right time, God will send the right person to you and you're not going to have to go looking for it. So I'm like, your grief counselor said the that next morning, the next morning. So I'm like, okay. And I, I haven't said anything <laughs> even about her yet. I said, okay. She said, so you're not even going to have to look for it. Finish my counseling session that night. I have to go to church with my bishop. He's preaching out. We go to go to service. Service was amazing, and we get to the end of service, and worship just hit the building. I mean, pure worship. And I'm worshiping, and the Lord speaks to me, literally, and says, "That is your wife." <laughs> While I'm worshiping, I'm like, "Nah." My wife was on previous life was only. Um, dead for about six months now and i said nah that can't be it's too quick and this is what i'm saying why i'm worshiping my arms is yeah but in my head i'm like he said that's your wife (laughs) he's like well she's got to wait 10 years to marry me because i (laughs) ride home i'm gonna ride home i'm riding and he says to me you either grasp it or let it pass you by he says this to me that whole night and then the next day wake up you either grasp it or let it pass you by. So I called her that next day. She said, how was service? <laughs> service, <laughs> service was great. I'm waiting. The Lord talked to <laughs> you again. Service was great. I said, but but the Lord told me something. I want to share with you. She said, what did he tell you? I said, okay. <laughs> I said, he said, I either grasp it or let it pass me by. So I didn't want to tell her I'm everything. Talking in pieces. He said, grasp <laughs> it. I said, what? She said, that's all That's, that's all, all he said? said. Grasp I, said, I said, yeah, he just said grasp it or let it pass. Grasp by. what? <laughs> so later on that day, we talk again. Lord said, just tell her. <laughs> so I tell her, I said, listen, you know, I 
That's you the earlier. hardest thing to do right here <laughs> as a I man. You, told you earlier that he said, grasp it or let it pass it by. I said, he actually told me you was my wife. She said, I know, because he told me you was my husband. I was just waiting for you to confirm it. And from that moment, <laughs> that moment right there, we began to talk every day. Yeah. And all this now all communicating. Day. Doing pa- pandemic. Pandemic. It just pandemic started. had just, just, no, it didn't even start yet. But we talked for like two or three weeks, just through FaceTime, you know, and that's all she did was FaceTime. We never talked right on the phone after <laughs> that one conversation. And then we decided to say, hey, we're going to go meet. You know, we, we finally met after those three weeks. And you were still living in Virginia at the time? Yeah, we met halfway. <laughs> yeah, we did. We yeah. met point. Tyson Corner. Um, and we spent some time together. And from there, because, you know, over the phone, we like, all right, yeah. FaceTime. But let's see if this something yeah. is going to be real. And, man, we we hit it off. And once we went back to our separate ways, I said, that's my wife. And what you say I did the first time we met? Yeah, I was going to leave it out. Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> I'm not going to say Go it. Ahead. But we come, you know, I'm a gentleman. She tells me, hey, I'm pulling up. I said, all right, I'm going to come down. I'm going to get you, you know, your bags and stuff. And I open up her door and she <laughs> jumps on me and put her arms around me. And you know, as a gentleman, I just lean over and say, uh, give a little kiss on her lips. And she just said, <laughs> Somebody was being fast, baby. <laughs> ooh, ooh, I didn't see my husband in the physical. How the baby? <laughs> so, so, y'all hear it now. This is the first time she admitted it. Okay. <laughs> She said I was being fast. Okay. I, listen, he was yeah. fine. He came up with that bar. I said, ooh. <laughs> right height. That hair was shining. LaTerris, I said, oh. He jumped on him. He's in it. <laughs> you jumped on him? Yeah, she did. I don't know what happened she to him. I don't know. She didn't even get it the happened so fast. The, the car was jumping. It wasn't even in park. She levitated. <laughs> she did. <laughs> yeah. But from there, man, we had such a great time. And right from there, you know, she came to New Jersey. Meet, we were back and forth in person because we met each uh, children. She met my children over FaceTime. Then I met her children on FaceTime. Mm-hmm. Then finally she came and met them in New Jersey. Then I came to Virginia to meet them. And then, now here's the crazy thing. She comes to visit the second time in New Jersey. And she's getting ready to leave. And um, my children say, we want to go back with her. <laughs> so now you got to listen to this. <laughs> My, I had a 19, 19 year old, he said, I want to go back with her. And at the time, 15 year old, three girls. And then my son, at the time we met, was 10. So, oh, good return 11. Now, three girls at that age, you know, they and they was protective, especially my 17 year old. Oh, yeah. Her, she was she mm-hmm. the one. Yeah, that's she the thug. You got to get past that one. Yeah, she used to tell me that, because I remember when I first told her, she's like, well, God going to have to tell me. <laughs> She, I mean, she was the tough one. Like, yeah. I, I don't know if I want to see with nobody else. Yeah. But I can tell you the first time, and I'm talking about the first time they talked to her through FaceTime, it's like they just clicked. Mm-hmm. Like, same thing with her kids. And they went back to Virginia State with her. They probably they went back. back. They went, they went. Those babies packed their bag mm-hmm. and said, we're going to Virginia. <laughs> I said, I don't have room for everybody in the car. <laughs> we're going to make room. We was on, They was on top of the roof everywhere. And came okay. to Virginia State with me for what? About two, two weeks. weeks. Two weeks. He had to come down I and get, get him. him. Yep, I came. Because it's doing pandemic. Everything's yep. closed. Oh, yeah, yeah. It yeah. was perfect. Yep. God set that thing up. Oh, was, my God. Our families came together. Yep. We had dating time. Yeah. So five months felt like felt like five years. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, y'all spending quality, quality time. Quality time, our, time our kids, together. Our kids is, so when I had five, I had four girls and one son. She had two sons and a daughter. And now we had eight together. And eight they, you would think they were seven. Oh, yeah. Yes. That's how close they were. They are. came with you and stayed for two weeks? Two weeks. And didn't want to go home. <laughs> and we were just doing back, back and forth. Home. I would come. My kids would come with me there. Then they would come back. It was back and forth. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, so we met March 1st, 2020. Mm-hmm. And I proposed to her June the 7th. 2020. We got, we married, got married August, August 7th, 7th, 2020. And we're two years now. And two years now. And now we're here in Texas. Yeah. How y'all get here? Oh. Okay, I'll let you start it. Well, let me say this. My husband had a, was building a home in New Jersey. Yeah. So when I moved to New Jersey, I brand moved new. into a brand new home. Mm. Love my home. The kids got settled into school and everything was great. Mm. 
And we received a proposal to um, pastor a church. And the um, person that asked us to pastor a church asked, where would you guys want to launch the church? And so my husband says to them, my wife loves Texas. I have always felt called to Texas. I knew that there was a plan for me here in Texas. So when I moved to New Jersey, when he said Sicklerville, I said, well, I miss God. Because <laughs> I thought I would be living in Texas one day. I totally missed it. Where I get Texas from? My husband said, my wife has always felt an affinity to, to Dallas, Fort Worth area. And they said, all right, go find some land there and, and, and y'all can start a church there. And we came to visit Texas in January yeah. of 20. 21, mm -hmm. bought a house the first time we came here. Built it, started getting it built. Got the house, and the Lord says, you thought you were going to pastor a church under that. That ain't what I sent you there for. Mm -hmm. You all go to Texas, and just like you had to trust me when you left Virginia, watch what I do. So we are now two months mm -hmm. being here, and we're just waiting to see what God's going to do. Yeah. But I know the Lord has allowed us to come to Texas because now we can grow in a new land together. Yeah, yeah. New Jersey, I'm coming into to his, his territory, territory. Yep. Yeah. his wife. Yeah. I'm yeah. in their church. Yeah. As much as the people probably wanted to love me yeah. and accept me, they, still, they, they still couldn't love. see past yeah. him and, and yeah. his first wife. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And even though I was taking it like a G, yeah, yeah. still, yeah. <laughs> God yeah, is like, was. no, I'm going to take y'all to a place where now y'all can build and grow together. Yeah. And so we're here. We're here. Someone tagged you under one of my posts. And you remember what, what she said in that post? She just said, hey, I love you. And I just feel like you guys need to meet. It would be so great if you all can be on his podcast. And I looked and I said, who is this woman? So I clicked and I started reading some stuff or whatever. And I said, hold on. Mm. Her kids go to Duncanville? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I said. They're in Texas. They're in Texas? They were around the corner for me. Mm. I said, the superintendent is meeting with me today. Mm. That's one of my main clients. And this, I said, wow. You play basketball for this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I said, God, this is okay. I, and then I came across another video of you talking about like your main thing that you talk about, about building women to be mm -hmm. wives or whatever. And I said, that's the answer. I said, a lot of my subscribers been saying, you need to do after David Burris came on the podcast talking about defining a husband. They said, um, listen, you need to do the female version to find a wife. And I said, you know what? I said, who can I get? Who can I get? I said, oh, well, the right person come along. Because I never try to force an Fine. episode. I'm like, whatever. And that popped up. I said, and she, and what? And they right around the, mm, mm, it's mm. okay. Okay. Then I saw what your husband does. I was like, man, this is dope. He fly. He got he got so fly. he got kids dressing up like they going to <laughs> getting getting married or yes. whatnot. I was like, oh, what what is what is all this? And I used to do a lot of stuff uh, in that space. I used to shoot a lot of the videography for oh. for people getting ready for prom or whatnot. And I was like. I like this. I said, I just want to just meet them just to meet them because mm -hmm. they just seem like a cool, uh, cool couple. And then y'all came and sat down. And then while wow, we setting up, y'all kissing each other. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, that's what I'm talking about. That's Aww. what it's about. It's about being affectionate towards each other yes. that y'all both meet in PDA. A lot of men, they, you know, yes. girl, don't be touching all of me like that. You know, like, oh, you ain't got to be touching me mm -hmm. all the time. You know, and y'all both mesh like that. Yes. So are y'all both like that where y'all both very physical with each other? Yes. yes. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> that is one of, that's both of our love that languages. Language, yeah. We love physical touch yes. and to show affection. You know, if he walks past and don't smack my butt, I say, "Wait, something happened." <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the kitchen. I'm in the kitchen. You, you ain't brush past me. Yeah. You know. Yeah. You be like, "What's wrong? What happened?" What happened? Uh -huh. You know. It, it. It's he's he's perfect. He is perfect for me. You All said, that I ever needed. <laughs> that's a trip because you said that you just ain't good out here in these dating streets. Oh, I tried it. And, and he said he's saying that. Hey, listen, uh, people told him basically it's gonna just god told him it's gonna come straight to him he ain't gotta go and mm -hmm. go sit here and be on dating apps and all that other stuff uh, yeah. you know oh every... he was a hot commodity now i know he was <laughs> that's my point you know these women were coming after him single pastor <laughs> they were trying to cook him food and everything yeah. he squeezed my hand okay <laughs> squeeze me and be quiet 
Amen. He said, doop, doop. But for, for, for sure they were. <laughs> he said, don't, tell, don't tell too much, okay? Don't tell too much, okay? But they were coming. So yeah. he didn't even have to go on the app. You already knew. It was like, okay, he mm, maybe he uh, he's done God grieving. Didn't give me no time. No, they don't give you no time to grieve. No. They're going to be they going to help you grieve. They were gonna, <laughs> They going to help but, you heal. But God didn't give me no time neither. He he knew what I needed and who I needed. And quick. Why did you need it so quickly? Why do you think you needed this so quickly? I believe not just for me, but for the my family and my children. We needed they needed a mother. Someone mm-hmm. that was going to now build on top of what their mother already built. And that's what she came in and done. Stuff that, um, even some stuff, and I could say this, that she used to say that they didn't know. Like, she used to say, are they a little behind? And at first, you got, you know, fit, like, you got a little offended. What mm-hmm. you mean they behind? <laughs> but I had to understand, like, all right, these young ladies now, I got I to speed the ball up. Some, some things they didn't learn, maybe just because their mom just didn't know. And he spo- he, he's a spoiler. Mm-hmm. So he yeah. took care of everybody. Yeah. So nobody wanted for anything. Mm-hmm. He did everything. Which, in a sense, kind of handicapped their he development. Because yes. I find that in my son, uh, who I adopted about three years ago, that mm-hmm. I'm trying to make up for the deficit of him being in foster care or whatnot. But then me making up for it. I'm crippling him yes. on getting that natural manhood that rears up in him and say, I got to go conquer That's because it. he's been so fathered. I'm going to say I'm mothering him to a certain mm-hmm. degree yeah. that I'm mothering him. And then when I start fathering him, cause fathering looks different than, than mothering. mothering. Yeah. Totally and different. so as I father him, he like, ah, you, yeah. and, then, and then it makes him unravel because mm-hmm. he's not used to being, even in foster care, he was always being fostered by women. Right. You know, and I'm like, I have this little joke that I say with him. I say, listen, I ain't gay. I ain't taking care of no That's man. Right. <laughs> That's I say, right. I, say, I, say, I ain't gay. I ain't taking care of no man. That's right. And he be like, why you say that, Dad? Because I, I ain't gay. I ain't taking care of no man. So at the end of the day, you're going to you're gonna have to stand up. That's you're going to have to get out the mud like I did. Right. Now, I'm going to help you. I'm going to guide you. Right. But uh, you're going to you're gonna have to level up. Yeah. Um, but I love the fact that... Um, that y'all were responsive enough to be able to be able to oh, let me come in and add that femininity. Let me, let me raise these women to be uh Proverbs 31 women. And it's like, it's, it's, that, but it wasn't easy. Yeah, it wasn't easy. I know it ain't. Both, a lot of our, our arguments was about that. It's, it's, yeah. Every one of them yeah. was about raising the, ch- the Change, children. Yeah. Why you want to let go? You know, cultures were different. And then they East coast. Yeah. They would answer. Yeah. Yes. No. Said, yes, sir, no, sir. Yes, yes, yes sir, sir, no, ma'am. Yeah. yeah. And, and she was like, why are they not answering like that? I'm like, well, the, the coach was just, and she just thought it was them until she started seeing <laughs> that. They don't say that up there. Because <laughs> up north, yes, ma'am, yes, sir is kind of sarcastic. <laughs> yeah, yes, sir. They're taking, like, what you mean, yes, sir? And they took she, offense to the, Yeah. <laughs> the coach, so it was the coaches different, learning the cultures. But then at the same time, I think, too, it was kind of me holding on to mm-hmm. the old. Yeah. And not allowing her to be what God sent her to be. Mm. So, so I had to take a step back and like, well, what Madre say? How long they started take in the beginning, dad, what you think? Mm. And so they was playing sides yeah. until he said, no, what did Madre say? Mm. We say the same thing. Mm. And he, he may not have agreed with everything, mm. but he would take me in the room, mm. not in front of the kids. Good, good. Okay. Now babe, what's the big deal? I mean, what's wrong with them laying around? Nothing to do. I said, it's a lot wrong. <laughs> the young ladies, find something to do. <laughs> yeah. I, I've been raised, we're going to find something. That's how I was raised. You know, we, we, we can't lay around all day long and yeah. scroll the phone. I was saying that to my son. I'm like, you, you always talking about how you were raised. I said, because listen, I said, I get up before you do. I go to work. I come home. And you're still, I go to sleep after you go to sleep. Something's wrong with that dynamic. Right. And I said, you just sitting around the house doing nothing. nothing. I said, I'm enabling this behavior. I said, this don't make no Mm-mm. sense. He's like, it ain't nothing to do. Find something to do. Go, go, go just start mowing the neighbor's just, yard. Go right. do something. Go do something. Go That's start me. picking up trash. Do something. Do line up the seasoning bottle. <laughs> I find something, but we're not going to just sit around. He's like, well, what's the problem? They did their chores. And I'm like, we are building and we're raising young women. And we want them to be able to be a uh, asset to society. Yes, that's why I always say asset to society. to society. I said to my sons, I'd be like, y'all got to be an asset to society. <laughs> yes. so y'all cannot be a liability. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> we old school. We so old school. But it worked. How it we was worked. Raised, it worked. It worked. Our mindset is a whole lot different. Yes. We're not, 
these kids nowadays they're they're very very fragile mm. mentally you know and they can't take any level of adversity Mm-mm. the minute there's a little bit of adversity they want to take themselves out yep. you know what i'm saying you be like god no that was just you just made a c why are you trying to commit suicide with a c it's okay you know it's like god, what is wrong with the world y'all? is over yeah, they didn't hire you for the job you know what y'all i got fired from like, right this right is, it's okay you know yes. life is gonna be better yep. so it's just and 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 it's partly our fault because a lot of us we've enabled our kids that's right and they be, they've uh, developed a codependency on us that they're always it. asking us and my son hates this when he goes so what should i do i said think mm. he was like it. i mean but <sighs> you just don't ever help me i said think Right. God gave you this beautiful thing inside your head called a brain. Yes. Use it. Yes. And, and now you always get upset when I say, one day I'm not going to be here to, to, to solve all your problems. You always talk about dying. I said, it's not about dying. <laughs> right. It's said, the same thing. Uh-huh. Yeah, one day I ain't going to be here. Yeah. So I need to know when I when I take my last breath that it's you okay, that you yes. good, yes. that you can even handle my funeral arrangements. Come right. on. Right. Come on, somebody. If you if you don't know how to think at all, I'm going to die. You're going to be like, I don't know what to do. Y'all going to yeah. leave me out here. I ain't going to be buried until about three, four weeks later. Like, <laughs> come on. Man, like yeah. I need to my think. all the time. Everything is already ready. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the great thing about kingship and all that is just letting the plot. So this is what I want y'all to do. I want you to ah, Siobhan, now I don't care if you call on that preacher side of you. I don't <laughs> care what comes out in this moment, but I want you to look at that camera and I ain't gonna tell you what to say. I just want you to just talk. Okay. I I don't believe that. Those of you who are watching, you are you have tuned into this broadcast or this episode by accident. Um, whenever God wants to get a message to us, whenever God wants to to deposit something into us, He will always put some type of drawing so that we could be where we're supposed to be. So you're not here by accident. Yes. And maybe those of you who are listening, maybe you're single, male or female, and you have been believing God for a mate because you know that there's a calling on your life to be a husband, to be a wife, and you're getting frustrated. You feel like, okay, is it ever going to happen? You know, I'm up in age. I'm getting in my 30s now. I'm 40. You know, maybe you've gone through a divorce and you're like, you know, I still want to do it again. I want you to know that in God's timing, it is going to happen for you. So while you're waiting, you're working, you're preparing. If you don't prepare, when it happens, you start getting ready. So when it comes, you're already walking in that thing and you're walking in it so so gracefully because you've allowed the Father to, to download into you what you would need for that marriage season. And for those of you who are not married and don't have a desire, there is still work for you to do for the kingdom. Yes. You know, get out there and, and, and make that money. Get out there and network and meet the people that you're supposed to meet to make the world a better place. Yes. I believe that when people um, walk in their purpose, they're happy people. Yes. When you walk in your purpose, you you purpose pays you. Yes. You know, you're not you're not broke when you're walking in purpose. Yes. Um, you're not frustrated when you're doing what you know you've been called to do. And so I am just grateful for. Those of you who, again, have tuned in, um, just like God did this for us, and it seems almost like a fairy tale, it is when you live in and walk in obedience to God, he will make it appear to others like it's a fairy tale. Yes. But this is what the Father wills for us. He says, no good thing will I withhold from them who walk upright, those that desire to please him, those that desire to walk according to his ways and statures. Yes. He won't just give us what we need, but he will give us the desires of our heart. For me to fulfill the purpose I was called to fulfill, I could not do it by myself for the rest of my life. I needed somebody to come in and cover me and to do the heavy lifting for me. There are things that that God just don't want me to do as a woman. I needed a man to be there. To, to, to be that head, to give directives, to give stability, to give the blueprint, to give mission, to give vision for our lives. And his vision had to be big enough to in-house the vision that God gave to me. And so I am just thankful for him. God answered my prayer. I prayed the prayer, you know, five years prior. So just because you've prayed, it don't mean it's going to happen yeah. instantly. So while I prayed, I believed that God was going to answer it. And I kept doing what I was called to do until what I prayed showed up in my life. So God hears your prayer. 
And God is not a man that he would lie. If he said it, he is going to watch over his word and make sure that what he spoke over your life, that it gets to you. He got him to me all the way in Virginia by way of Sicklerville, New Jersey. Thank God for social media. I ain't never heard of Sicklerville, New Jersey. Me neither. <laughs> and I checked my inboxes. And, you know, this particular God said, I want you to respond to this one. Have an ear to hear the voice of the Lord. There it is. Being able to know the voice of God is, is, is very crucial for your success. And knowing how God speaks, it's not always an audible voice because some of us, we're waiting for God to come through the sky and say, hey, you, God speaks in so many different ways. Yes. He will speak through a cartoon. Yeah. He will speak through a stranger on the street. Sure will. He will speak through a DM message. Yeah. <laughs> you just got to live so where you're so close to him and so at one with him that when he's talking, you know, this is a God ordained message right here. Siobhan, respond to this because you answering this message is getting ready to change your whole life. That's good. Knowing the voice of God. How do I learn that? Spending time with him. There it is. So in my single time, I spent time with God. Now I can't spend hours in prayer because my husband, okay, get up, get up. Now come on and minister to me. <laughs> you and God didn't talk long enough. You didn't spend time with him. Now come spend time with me. But in my single time, I could spend all day, all I could do whatever I wanted to do. Because I didn't have any, any, any other distractions. Yeah. But now... My, my focus and my, my, my um, attention is not just to God, but it's to my little Lord that he's given to me, Cheyenne Smith. Cheyenne, you got a word in your heart. Well, I'll just say this. I say that be thankful for the gift. Mm. Um, I, and I say this all the time, that she was truly my gift in the time of need. And... Just be thankful. I'm thankful. I tell her all the time that I'm thankful for, watch this, her leading in certain moments. Mm. Because you got to be able to understand that although you may be the head, yes. that sometimes that you got to play the back and to be okay with playing the back. Mm. So I'm, I'm, I'm thankful um, that God sent someone that one is anointed as she is powerful walks in authority but also as beautiful as she is and as much as people think she speaks so bold she's one that's really shy and i like that shyness about her but i also like that boldness about her yeah i was surprised because before we record she said i'm getting nervous like, you nervous you over yeah. here casting out demons and everything. <laughs> you nervous in front of a microphone yes. i just get nervous in front of a microphone i said lady you a slave in this whole <laughs> I was like, are you serious? Nervous. But yeah, that's that, that's dope. So you said that she's just a little, little cuddly little girl inside, huh? Yes, she really is. So to say to the viewers, to be thankful when God does bring you that gift. Because when you're thankful, it's just like when you tell someone thank you when they give you a gift, that makes them say, oh, I want to give you that much more. So every time I say, hey, baby, I'm just so grateful for you. Hey, baby, I just thank you for just being a corrector i thank you for being a guider i thank you for uh being sometimes a provider mm -hmm. you know i'm thankful that make her just be like and sometimes i gotta be like no no no, you don't gotta do that <laughs> no nah, you don't gotta do that but if i could say anything i say be thankful be thankful for your gift that's good that's another message right there be thankful for your gift listen um how can people connect with y'all what's y'all ig handles well you can connect with me i didn't bring it up <laughs> But I am also a business owner, a custom clothier teller. Um, I do people all across the country, as you heard um, him speak about earlier, that, you know, we do it on another level up there, up north, when it comes to proms. So y'all can follow me on uh, my IG is Styles by Shy. You also can follow me on Facebook, Styles by Shy. YouTube Styles by Shy or go to my website www.stylesbyshydesigns.com and I'll drop all that in the description what about thank you thank you I am at Siobhan Smith on all Everywhere. social media sites yeah uh, can I just go ahead and add this y'all got the whitest teeth I've ever seen in my life <laughs> 
Y'all teeth white than a mug. I'm like, goodness gracious, what they just left the dentist before they came up here? Got went to sleep with teeth whitening trays or something? Like, what in the world? <laughs> I'm funny that about dude. that mouth. You are. Oh, I said, was that came. another? Was that another little moment when you met him? Like, oh, he got white teeth. Yeah, I got, got to a be nice husband. smile, and that mouth ain't raggedy. Yeah. He's it. He's it. <laughs> That's the one guy. That's the one. That's the one guy. Well, listen, thank y'all so much. Listen, I've gotten a lot of inspiration uh, from this episode. I don't know what guy was doing because I was like just sitting in tears in my eyes the whole time. It's just, it's something. It's something that God is unlocking mm -hmm. and unraveling that yes. I'll, I'll get the full picture later on. I'll be like, oh, that's what was going mm -hmm. on in that moment. But I just felt the divine connection, not only to y'all, but to y'all story and to what God is trying to do through me uh, by watching y'all as an example. Thank you. Uh, so thank, thank y'all so for sharing y'all's heart. Thank y'all for being obedient to just show up today. Yes, thank sir. you for uh, being yeah. obedient and creating this platform. Yes, thank you. You, you have such a, just a kind, gentle spirit, humble man, and I, and I thank God for you. Yeah. I do. You know what's so interesting? You call me humble. You know, years ago, I I, I was like, I was the most prideful person you'll ever meet. But look you know, what I, I had an ego through the mm. roof. You understand me? I was touring shows across the country, making play, uh, making tons of money, more money than I've ever seen in my life. And everybody used to always be like, you just got a big old ego. You has got ego. And I'm like, no, I don't. I'm the nicest person in the world. Mm. But I had an ego because I had to build on, like I was in this industry where, you get eaten alive, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying? And so I was dealing with a lot of cutthroat promoters or whatnot, and I walked in this industry and I was green and being taken advantage of. So I said, nah, you ain't finna just punk me and be taking my money and, mm -hmm. and jipping me off on this. So I built up this strong wall and defense. Uh, and what that did with people I didn't trust, it kept them out. And then the people that I did trust, it kept them in, but it also had me operating with a level of uh, uh, ego and pride. Mm -hmm. And so um, through my brokenness, I believe that God cultivated humanity Humility. Well, it's there. It's there. I'm glad you recognize yes. it. Anything you want to pour into me, old Cheyenne? Um, man, just um, stay who you are. Um, I, I watched you as you you talked about them tears, and I sometimes as men, you know, we don't want to. We try to fight them back. We don't <laughs> want to show that emotional side. Mm -hmm. um, but what I'm learning is that um, women like to see that emotional side. Always. Uh, so God is faithful, um, and he has already shown that he's faithful to you in what you're doing. But he's also going to be faithful to you because of what you're doing and send you that right one that, like I was, didn't know she was coming. Yeah. But she was right around the corner. Yeah. Wow. And it seemed like it's right at the point where it seems like, hey, it ain't, ain't nothing going right. You know, I was at, at my point of pain and just ready to just yeah. be out of here. But he said, if you just hold on a little while, one of my favorite scriptures is Psalms 27 and the 13th verse where it says, I had fainted, meaning I did fall down. But because the goodness of the Lord, because of the things I've seen him do before, because he showed up so many times, that's what keeps me holding on. So I say to you, my brother, just keep holding on because of you holding on, God is going to do something great for you. I receive it, King. Ladarian, thrusted suddenly into Child Protective Services in 2015. My nephew, black, a boy. The likelihood of being adopted outside of kinship, slim to none. Armani, 16 years old, black, a boy, with five years in the foster care system before I even knew his name. The likelihood of ever being adopted, Yep, you guessed it, slim to none. While Ladarian and Armani were trying to survive and barely thrive in an overpopulated and underfunded foster care system, I was living my own life, doing well professionally. Having been a single father with a daughter who at that point was doing well in college, it was my time to live my life, right? Wrong. I felt unsettled, tireless, agitated. There are just two many of our black children stuck in ambiguity and in the limbo of the foster care system. In 2017, I legally adopted my nephew, Ladarian. Fast forward to 2019, I had no ties to this other young king, but I felt God instructed me to adopt him also, and I obeyed. Starting over with parenting should have been enough, right? Working with various foster care and adoption agencies to help bring awareness to the countless young black kings in the foster care system should have decreased my agitation, right? 
Join the board of directors of Advantage Adoption, an organization that helps find permanent adoptive homes for children in foster care. Should have led to some type of resolve, right? No, not at all. None of it felt like I had done enough. I now realize that every one of those experiences was laying the fundamental foundation for my life's mission, Kingdom Royale. Kingdom Royale will be a luxury, state-of-the-art home for foster boys. Our first location will be in the Dallas-Fort Worth Metroplex. We will utilize the whole person approach that instills identity, empowers them to advocate for themselves, and enlightens them regarding new perspectives and limitless options that they thought were impossible. Though the young kings will attend the local public schools that are in proximity to Kingdom Royale, our at-home curriculum will broaden their worldview through participating in the arts, attending various cultural events, learning about and engaging in multifaceted discussions about current events and even relevant historical contexts, introducing them to gardening and landscaping and even caring for our animals on our farm and on-site stables. We just launched our startup capital campaign with the goal of raising $2.8 million. Now, why $2.8 million? Well, in 2017, I created a web series in which I performed random acts of kindness for targeting the homeless community. One of the most notable successes was that one of the videos went viral, garnering 28 million views. However, one of my biggest regrets is that I didn't raise a single dollar to help in implementing a more sustainable plan for the homeless community. So throughout the years, with much remorse. I reflected on not maximizing that moment. I knew if at that time, just 10% of the viewers donated $1, we would have raised at least $2.8 million that could have really established long-term support for the homeless community, or at least started a long-term initiative to do so. This is my do-over. This is our new beginning. Together, we can attack this at the root by specifically helping our homeless black boys who are already disproportionately represented in the American foster care system. I'm LaTaris R. Whitfield. I've been nominated for three regional Emmys documenting my work with the homeless as well as my personal adoption journey. Despite those accolades, the greatest award for me is truly providing the infrastructure for a transformed life. Visit KingdomRoyale.com for more details. Crown a king and make a donation today. Man, I don't know what God was doing in this episode with the Smiths, but man, it 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 touched me. It's yeah, it touched me. Yeah, that was different. I've never felt that in an interview. Well, listen. We have just a little bit more time before the Lit Society launches October the 1st. Make sure you get in and register. Uh, it's going to be amazing. It's going to be very, it's going to be life changing. People are never going to return to who they once were after this moment. Healing is going to take place. Uh, God has given me such, I get excited about it because I had a dream or a vision of something one morning where I saw it all come uh, into fruition about the Lit Society. And I said, God, this is, you're about to change the nation with this. And um, I'm honored. I'm truly honored that God is birthing this through me. Join this course. I'm telling you, it's going to be impactful. Well, here's my favorite part of the podcast where I speak to my future wifey. Dear future wifey, my biggest fear is finding you, then losing you. I was just about to write this entire letter about the fear of losing you, but my spirit is telling me to pivot. This will solely be about how I will cherish every gifted moment with you as though it's my last. Thank you, Lord. Perspective. It is my great commission to never go to sleep angry with you. I will quickly reroute, evaluate, and expel any moment I make you feel something or someone has gained priority over you. Every second of every minute, every minute of every hour, every hour of every day will serve as a gracious reminder God honored my heart's desire by entrusting me with you. Until I take my last breath, you will know 
that's like the blood that pumps through your veins. That I love you. I love you with the 1 Corinthians 13 kind of love. Seeing you is proof perfect that God truly sees me. I love you, queen. Your future hubby. I hope you enjoyed this episode of the Dear Future Wifey podcast. Remember, be lit, live intentionally and transparently, and don't stop loving. Make sure to subscribe to our Dear Future Wifey YouTube channel. We're available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify, and Stitcher. We welcome your support. Simply share our podcast with your friends and family.